Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria, APWEN Lagos Chapter, held a virtual annual public lecture and formal introduction of National Society of Black Engineers, Junior Chapter, with the theme, Powering Sustainable Energy, Diversity and Inclusion of Women in Renewable Energy Initiative. The guest speaker, Chief Mrs. Anita Okuribido, the chairman, Women in Renewable Energy, in her speech, said a strategic approach to sustainable women empowerment integrates capacity building with demand and supply both within and outside the community. The strategic approach to sustainable rural empowerment integrates capacity building with demand and supply both within and outside the pension community. The strategic intent is to develop capacity that would address existing demand for goods and services, both with the outside the community and so increase capital inflow into the community. This integrated approach to rural empowerment depends solely, and I want to say solely, on renewable energy technology. The Director of Renewable and Rural Power Access Department of the Federal Ministry of Power, Engineer Dr. Farouk Yusuf Yabo, FNSC, in a very detailed presentation, gave an insight into the nitty-gritty of renewable energy in Nigeria and what the government is doing in making sure that every Nigerian benefits from it. There are 20 foot. Now that brings about a lot of uh, interest and a lot of need for us to look inward as to how do we address this expansion, especially that uh, a lot of the developing uh, economies are past rushing into getting to be in, in a sustainable position. And so renewable energy plus up very clearly. And so Nigeria being one of those countries that is blessed with renewable energy resources, be it solar, be it uh, small and medium hydros, biomass, and even to some extent wind at the coastal regions, makes it uh, quite compelling for us to look inward. A panel session followed which involved seasoned engineering professionals like engineer Oluremi Hamid, CEO of Hydrogen Energy, Dr. Weber Boa, CEO of All On, Mr. Duke Benjamin, Head of Program, GIZ, Nigeria Energy Support Program, and other contributors to discuss on issues bordering on renewable energy in Nigeria and women participation in driving it. That's actually the, the SOLAF energy that I mentioned. That was one of those. And so we have programs through the um, Nigeria Climate Innovation Center in, in, the, in, in Lagos. Um, and then the climate climate uh, the clean tech hub in abuja um clean tech hub is also run by women um and these programs go on annually and they take in about 15 to 20 businesses each year um at that stage and then and then help them kind of develop their idea take it beyond just the the concept um and then and then all of them are eligible for um for, for up to ten thousand dollars in grant money that's taken forward so that's at the very early stage then at the next stage at the angel stage we have an annual challenge um, that we do along with the U.S. Africa Development Foundation. Um, we put up $50,000 of debt. The UNDF puts up $50,000 of grant money. Um, and so the $100,000 then can be used, for example, to put up a small mini grid in their communities if that's the business they want to start. But again, it would have to be in, a full, in an incorporated business. Um, it's not just an individual. So they would have to have a business that we could invest in. Um, and then we would work with them further to make sure that they build and scale. So those are probably the entry points for young entrepreneurs who are interested in that space, either the ideation program or the angel program, and all of that information is available on our website. And in both of the programs, um, we have a, um, you know, it, we have a special weighting. So if, if the business is women owned um, or women managed, um, they actually get sort of extra weighting and have an extra advantage to, to make it through the program. I mean, I, I believe GIZ could have done it in such a way that as in GIZ could have mandated each institute to make sure they have one female representative 
at that training. So it still comes to the to the fact that women are underrepresented. Yes, we know it's um, a technical world. It's an engineering um, solution provider company. I mean, sector. But we still have to realize that you don't have to be an engineer to own a solar company. I don't believe you need to have a technical background to own um, a solar company. I think you should just get trained. Training, training, training is absolutely important. As long as you have a first degree, um, you can get a team, a very sound team. I'm not sure all the men that we have in the industry are all engineers. I want to believe some of them have other backgrounds. And um, we really need to get to the point where we, we start including women more having more women come to the table. You know, engineering usually is dominated by men, and we see it as sort of sciences as um, a place where it is normal to see more men. But nevertheless, I believe it is up to all of us all to strongly include women. And that already starts with, you know, extra step to get female workers um, and support them at the workplace so when you are as a company when you are at, uh, you're getting new when you're employing you look for females in the sector and get them in so but however she just mentioned one of our trainings nesp nigeria energy support program has had a lot of trainings in the past and we have always made sure we can include as many females as possible so we actually um give them the privilege once they are able to scale the entry the um, qualifications for those trainings to have as many women as possible we've um, offered scholarship to 53 young female what graduates that? in the past we've trained them on solar pv installation solar pv installation supervision and mini grid design most of the names that um, um dr vive mentioned earlier on work together with NESP. Um, Habiba was in the training, just like Remy mentioned. Her company won one of the tenders that we are currently doing together with the Federal Ministry of Environment on clean cooking stoves. And um, Hannah Kabia, he mentioned from Creeds, works closely with us. So I believe it is an effort, first of all, by the German, by the Nigerian government to create policies that will bring female inclusion. And then secondly, it is left for us as those that are struggling to get more girls and women into the sector to always support them at each point in time without prejudice. But one of the things we took to in the strategic plan, which I'm also heading, is the issue of job creation and gender mainstreaming. And of course, uh, we, we got a memo uh, from uh, from uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Anita. He was very proactive, and look, we need to involve women in this uh, in this alliance. I said that's right, and because um, in, in that memo has received uh, a, a, an attention, and um, I I do know, like I said earlier, that in this renewable energy space, if you want to look at people that are going to the job opportunities are there for women. Let me give you an instance. In terms of demography, 70% uh, of women uh, 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 in the Nigerian household, if you have a household of 18 million Nigerians, uh, 18 million households out of 18 million, and in that 18 million, maybe 70% of them are rural women, 12.7 million. And of course, when you can look at who, who are those rural households, that's, that's women. So we are talking about the clean cook stove. The people that are going to the beneficiaries are women. So you, you need to, the policies will be built around job creation for women because there are three things that will happen. Build livelihoods, improve the quality of life, and enhance standard of living. On her own part, the chairman of the Lagos branch of the Association of Professional Women Engineers, Engineer Mary Afolayan, emphasized on what the women group will be doing to further support the government in its renewable energy plan and the inclusion of women in it. This lecture is aimed at, number one, um, we aim at promoting the SDG 7. And number two, and our objective for this lecture, and I'm so sure that we have really dealt well with this, that we need to raise more females in the renewable energy 
and this has to be with statistics. So upon we were launching um, a collaboration with Ministry of Power and um, Women in Renewable Energy. We will be collaborating with them to ensure that statistically we are able to bring to the table that um, post this lecture we were able to achieve a better percentage of women in renewable energy. It is obvious that for Nigeria to attain electricity for all within the next couple of years, renewable energy is no doubt the way to go, and women are going to play an integral part in achieving this. Various engineers and engineering outfits were awarded with awards for the good work they are doing within and outside the engineering space in Nigeria.